I am Avdesh Kumar Mishra and today I will talk about the language education policy in India part 2 that includes the national curriculum framework 2005 and teaching of languages including Indian languages, foreign languages and English. The national curriculum framework 2005 that is the NCF 2005 talks about various languages and issues related to teaching and learning of languages. Language education is one of the main areas of concern in the NCF 2005 and also in the position paper of the national focus group on teaching Indian languages. The NCF 2005 considers that the three language formula addresses the challenges and opportunities of the language situation in India. The primary aim of the three language formula is to promote multilingualism and national harmony. This is why the NCF 2005 emphasizes on the implementation of the three language formula. The NCF 2005 talks about many other things and some of the salient points that have been discussed in the NCF 2005 are number one, language teaching should be multilingual not only in terms of the number of languages offered to the children but also in terms of evolving strategies that would use the multilingual classroom as a resource. So, the NCF 2005 considers that multilingual classroom is a resource. That means, we have children speaking various languages in the same class and children can learn from one another, they can have exposure to various languages also and thus the classroom can be used as a multilingual resource. Home language of children should be the medium of learning in schools. As we know that most of the times in India, there are differences between the home languages and the school languages. We have about 400 languages and mother tongues, but out of them only say about 130 or 140 are used in schools. So, what does that mean? The rest of the languages which are not used in school the children speaking those languages do not get opportunity to learn in their own home language. So, that is why the NCF is concerned that the, the bridge between home language and the school language should be built. If a school does not have provisions for teaching in the child's home language at higher levels, the primary school education must still be covered through the home language. Children will receive multilingual education from the outset. The three language formula needs to be implemented in its spirit, promoting multilingual communicative abilities for a multilingual country. As you know, we have a policy of the three language formula where children have to learn, study three languages, mother tongue, Hindi or English and another modern Indian language. So, that means the NCF 2005 advocates for implementation of the three language formula and thus have a multilingual classroom where children learn in various languages and also they learn various languages. Language education should not be confined to the language classroom. A science, social science or mathematics class is if so facto a language class. That means, because we transact everything whatever the subject in a language. That is why every class is a language classroom and also the teachers have to talk to the children in language, the textbooks are in some language. So, everywhere language is found and that should be utilized. So, whether it is a science class or social science class or a mathematics class. Children will receive multilingual education from the outset as I said. As long as the basic spirit of the three language formula is maintained, there is no restriction on studying new languages. So, that means, in addition to the mother tongue Hindi or English, a modern Indian language, a foreign language can also be studied in schools and classical languages can also be added. Primary education should be bilingual. That means, successive stages of bilingualism are expected to build up to an integrated multilingualism. Utmost care must be taken to produce textbooks which are not a poor translation of English books in the language of the children. That means, uh, you must have seen that mostly uh, we tend to have translations of 
something from English to the mother tongue. But as NC of 2005 says that should not be done. So, we should not write textbooks first in English and then translate them into the mother tongues where it should be originally written in the languages of the children who are going to school. In the middle or higher stages of school education, the medium of instruction must be gradually changed to the regional or state language or to Hindi or English. As we know that we have uh, various languages used in the schools, colleges and universities. So, there are some languages which are used in a particular region like Assamese, Bodo, Manipuri, Nepali, Bengali, Tamil, Telugu, etc. So, as per the policy of the state, a regional language can also be used at higher levels. Primary education is to a great extent language education. Mother tongue or regional language should also be taught as compulsory subjects. So, as we know that whenever we have classes say in the environment, environmental studies or social science or mathematics, they are transacted in some language. So, language is present everywhere. So, that is why the NCF 2005 talks about implementing a policy of having regional languages taught as subject and also as medium of instruction. While talking about teaching of English, the NCF 2005 says English at the conversational level may be introduced in the primary school if adequate facilities are available. Merely adding a few more years to the teaching of English is not likely to produce any results. So, that means if you teach only the grammar or say a children do not get chance to use English in any context, then what will happen? They will learn only the grammar of the English language, but they will not be able to be become proficient in English language. That is why the NCF 2005 says that it should be taught at the conversational level. English should not stand alone in our school education system. The teaching of English should be aimed at creation of multilinguals who can enrich our languages. It also talks about English should find a place along with other Indian languages in different states. Language is learnt when it is taught through exposure in meaningful context. So, teaching of English language or some other language must be in meaningful context. Input rich communicational environments are a prerequisite for language learning, whether the language is the first language or the second language. Inputs include textbooks, learner chosen texts and class libraries allowing for a variety of genres, print, parallel books and materials in more than one language, media support for example, learner magazines, newspaper etc and authentic materials. So, what does uh, we what do we mean by this that is that we should have variety of materials used in language classroom. It should not be only restricted to the textbook. So, we can use magazines, newspapers and some other authentic materials. Authentic materials are the materials which are written for the mother tongue speakers. That means, as it is used in everyday normal situation, not artificially written material. The goals for a second language curriculum are twofold attainment of a basic proficiency such as is acquired in natural language learning and the development of language into an instrument for abstract thought and knowledge acquisition through say for example, literacy. So, language is not to be taught only to become proficient in a particular language. It has to be also used for constructing knowledge. It has to become the instrument of abstract thought and also acquire knowledge for various disciplines. The NCF 2005 argues for an across the curriculum approach that breaks down the barriers between English and other subjects and English and other Indian languages. You must have noticed that most of the time we think that textbook in one language is meant only for that language and even though that language is used for science, maths and social science classes, there is no connection. 
the science teacher thinks that she has no role to play in making the child learn few words in English or some other language. So there is a kind of barrier between the two languages, the home language, the, uh, the English language and other Indian languages. So if the language is used across the curriculum in all subjects, what, whichever uh, subject is taught in class and there is a connectivity between say English and other Indian languages and one language and another language, then the language teaching will be really effective. Talking about Sanskrit, the NCF 2005 says that Sanskrit should be studied as a modern Indian language. Its nature in which case should be very different from classical Sanskrit. So as we know that there are two varieties of Sanskrit, one is the classical Sanskrit and the other is the modern Indian variety of Sanskrit that we use in day to day conversation and for daily activities uh, in modern times. So the NCF says Sanskrit could be taught either as classical Sanskrit or also as modern Indian language, but the methods for teaching the two types will be different. Uh, talking about Urdu, the NCF 2005 says for linguists there is no fundamental difference between Urdu and Hindi. Both languages have the same syntax and they share a greater part of their phonology, morphology and lexicon. By that we mean as we know that Hindi and Urdu they use different scripts. Hindi is written in Devanagari, Urdu is written in Persho Arabic script. But if you look at the structure of the two languages, you will see that the syntax, the sentence structure, they are quite similar in uh, Hindi and Urdu. Their phonology also, the sound system is similar. Morphology, how they create words, the internal structure of words, they are similar in both the languages. And lexicon, that is the word stock in both Hindi and Urdu, they are similar. I will give you some examples. In Hindi, you, if you say, Main pani peena chahta hoon. And the same uh, sentence will be used in Urdu too. So you can't say something else. You have to say, I may pani peena chahta hoon. Aao hum log baat chit karein. Chaliye hum class chalein. Kal tum kya kaam karne wale ho. All these sentences can be used both in Hindi and Urdu. So this is what we mean by the uh, term that Hindi and Urdu, both languages use same syntax and similar phonology, morphology and lexicon. Talking about Urdu and also Sindhi, the NCF 2005 says that these two languages as you know, they are not in majority in any state, both Sindhi and Urdu. So special care has to be taken of these two languages. And Urdu demands a special attention at the national level. And the state at the state level, the problems it faces are the same as those faced by other minority languages. Then the NCF 2005 also talks about the underprivileged, so called underprivileged speakers of minor, minority and tribal languages. They often suffer severe linguistic deprivation. Why so? Because we find that there are about 200 tribal languages, the languages that are that are mainly spoken by tribal speech communities, but they are not used in school. That is why what happens? They suffer, they, they are deprived in a way. So the NCF 2005 advocates that all these minor, which are not major languages and the tribal languages, they should be taken special care of. Major languages of this country, including English, can flourish only in the company of and not at the cost of minor languages. So that means when all languages are respected, all languages find place in a school curriculum, then in the company of each other they will flourish, they will develop. The social and cultural institutions of contemporary societies are constantly illuminated by the past and classical languages remain their vehicles. So that is why the NCF 2005 says that classical languages should also find place in a school curriculum. And as we know, the classical languages include Arabic, Sanskrit, Tamil, Kannada, Telugu, Tamil, Malayalam and Odia. In addition to the mother tongue and other languages of the country that a child learns in school, 
foreign languages such as German or French have a legitimate place in the school curriculum. So, as I mentioned earlier that we have three language formula where three languages have to be studied, but there is no upper limit. So, as fourth language German, French, Russian, Chinese or some other foreign language can also be included in the school curriculum as per the NC of 2005. Since a foreign language is not at all available in the immediate environment of the learner, it demands different pedagogical strategies from those of first or second language teaching. So, as you know that in first language that is mother tongue, the children already know spoken language and they already know how to listen to something and understand it. So, our focus is mainly on the written or the read variety of uh, English, what they uh, we teach them how to acquire writing and reading skills. We do not have to teach them how to speak their language because they already know their mother tongue when they come to school. So, the teaching method will be different. In second language, the children almost they have none or very little exposure to the second language like English or some foreign language. So, that is why our method has to be different. The position paper on teaching Indian languages with reference to the NC of 2005 talks about certain basic principles related to language teaching methods and suggests that every teacher will evolve his or her specific method depending on a variety of social, psychological, linguistic and classroom variables. So, that means the teachers have freedom to consider the social, linguistic and other variables in classroom and then devise their own methods. So, it is not necessary that a particular method of language teaching should be used in every class. Some of these basic principles among others include learner. Whatever be the method used in the classroom, the learner should never be treated as an empty receptacle. That means, the teacher should not try in classroom to merely transfer the knowledge that they have in their brain, in their mind to the students, because no child which comes to school at around the age of 5 or 6 is uh, completely uh, say uh, empty, no child's brain is completely empty. So, she, she is not a receptacle, not a utensil where you pour something, knowledge is not to be poured in that empty receptacle, it has to be transferred, it has to be created, it has to be constructed. Attitude, the teacher has to be positively inclined towards all pupils irrespective of their caste, color, creed or gender, so that they will get positively motivated to the involved, to be involved in the teaching learning process. So, the teacher have to be positively inclined, you, you have to teach students thinking that they are uh, important in class and you are helping them construct knowledge. Teachers positive attitudes will also help lowering the anxiety levels of learners. As we know that in language teaching learning, anxiety is a factor. If, if the students are very anxious, the level of anxiety is very high, then language will not be learned effectively. So, that is why we have to see that we maintain a positive attitude to the students, so that they are not, their level of anxiety is low. Input. There has been a scholar thinker named Krashen and according to him the input should be rich, interesting and challenging and should be woven around topics which encourage peer group learning. So, by simply put this means that we have to be careful about what the input is there in language teaching and learning and that should be rich, input rich environment where they get various types of materials and also the level of understanding develops on what kind of input is given. If the input is below the current level of the student or if it is much higher than the current level of the student, then nothing becomes comprehensible. That is why we have to take care of the input. Multilingualism as a resource, I have already mentioned uh, two, three times earlier. This is a very important factor and the NCF 2005 talks about it and says language teaching methods can be eminent sites for utilizing the multiplicity of languages available in the classroom. 
issues of gender and environment. It is necessary that modern language teaching methods create awareness about the gender and environment issues among children. As we know that if you teach uh, children about moral values or that the men and women are equal and some other qualities, other virtues, it is not learned. So, it, had, it has to be woven uh, around some stories and some other texts which are used in the classroom. Assessment. Every possible effort should be made to make assessment a part of the teaching learning process. The normal classroom processes should not be broken for a test or examination as it raises the anxiety levels of the learners, disrupting the learning process in a significant way. So, what does, what does it mean? That there should not be frequent tests or examinations because it breaks the classroom environment. It is not the normal classroom cannot be uh, maintained if you have frequent tests or examinations. So, assessment should be part of the teaching learning uh, process, but there should not be too many tests or too many examinations and it should be uh, aimed at assessing the children's progress, what they have already learned, what they have not learned and then that will help the teachers modify her lessons, modify her teaching ways, etc. Today we talked about the salient features of the NC of 2005 and we saw that the NC of 2005 emphasizes on multilingualism, making multilingualism as a resource and also implementation of the three language formula in its spirit. That means using mother tongue, Hindi and English in classrooms in India. We also saw that it talks about the uh, teaching methods, what kind of input should be there, how the teachers have to behave so that the students are motivated and they learn teaching, they learn languages in a proper way and they become proficient and autonomous. That is all for today. Thank you.